Mm-hmm. You can well, you can yeah. share it. Okay. If you want to. So the executive summary, if you look here, you always want to monitor jobs to make sure that they're actually using the resources like you think. So both not too large and not too small. Uh, as you're trying to make things run longer and longer or with more and more processors, you want to monitor very carefully to make sure that it scales well. Because it can often happen that you use a lot of processors and it runs just as fast or even slower as when you had fewer. And that's just a huge waste. And then there's several different commands here to use. Maybe we can... Yeah, Go if on. you maybe I, if you share my screen, I can yeah. I can show the uh, actually the like we can use this uh, as an example mm -hmm. uh, this this script that I previously okay. run perfect. So so okay. because like if we think about what we just did in the example, we monitored the output using tail. Like we had the job running, we can even let's let's submit it again the the job that runs there. Uh, so let's let's use s batch and uh, use the sleeve for. So what is monitoring? The first step of monitoring that your job should provide some output that you can use to see what it does. Like that's the first step. Like you should have something in your code that provides some output, some print statement, something uh, that you can then use for your advantage. Of course, like your job shouldn't be outputting everything uh, constantly because that creates noise and it, it reduces the readability. But let's say your job is running something and it will produce like every thousand iterations, it will produce some output, you know, then, okay, it's currently running here. If your job is sim like a complete black box that like you just fire it away and you know nothing what happens and then it just crashes, you're you're out of luck basically and it's very hard to debug what's happening so you should have some sort of like debugging not complete debugging like printing everything what the job knows but but like some simple output that you can you you can follow it uh if it performs correctly but if that's not enough uh you can always rely on the slurm or if you don't have that available or if you haven't use that you can always rely on slurm to provide you some of this output so if you, uh, the commands that richard highlighted here so mm -hmm. we have the sf command so uh, let's see let's see some of the jobs that uh, i run let's look at one of the previous commands so let's see for example this first one this run host name so if we run the sf command on that, we will get some output. Yeah. In this case, we will get like <laughs> CPU efficiency we'll zero because CPU. it basically didn't do it didn't do anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So not a very good job, is it? But yeah. but in a, in an actual job, you might get uh, something between zero and hundred percent. You cannot go over hundred percent because hundred percent like hundred hundred percent represents that all of the resources were used correctly. Mm -hmm. Like if you ask for ten CPUs, uh, then hundred percent means that all the ten CPUs worked constantly. If you ask for five CPUs, it means that the five CPUs are, worked constantly. And the memory efficiency, well, that can go over hundred uh, percent mm -hmm. if you had ask more stuff than you actually no. uh, needed but then uh your Does... other help is the slurm q okay yeah if you had does 100 percent that... cpu efficiency mean the job is doing what it should like not can it necessarily use doing something but still yeah. be inefficient yeah, of course. Like it, mm -hmm. it just means it's just a mechanical or like simple calculation. Is the CPU occupied? Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's doing the correct thing. It can mm -hmm. like be any as inefficient as you want, yeah. but it can like uh, it just utilize the CPU. So of course yeah. you will have to like add into your code some timings or something like that that mm -hmm. lets you know how long it takes in different steps. And so it's like, a good idea to check uh, profile yeah. code or something like that to check where are the bottlenecks so like when you're doing real scaling testing you'd not measure the cpu 
efficiency, but you'd also measure the results efficiency somehow. Yes, yes. So uh, we will talk about this SF a bit more when uh, tomorrow we will run multi GPU, uh, multi CPU jobs, and then we'll mm -hmm. check how efficient they are with SF. Uh, and then there's also another command. Uh, I think it's mainly auto specific that you can check the GPU efficiency, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain that other other sites have something similar as well. Uh, but but basically the idea is that make your code so that you can read the output. Like that's that's the simplest way of uh, like that's the best way of monitoring your job. Make it so that you understand what the job is doing. Uh, like by, by making it print something every now and then. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So we talked about monitoring after submitted with SQ. We talked mm -hmm. about um, the while it's running. Oh, did we talk about while it's running? So we can tail the files to see as things are coming, the debugging, checkpoints. Yeah, I, I think guess we... that's covered. Yeah. yeah, if you want to, there's more, more information on, in the... A documentation that yeah. you can browse to more hints, but uh, those yeah. are the main points. Like, look what the job is do doing. Use the SQ or the Serum queue to check what what it's doing. Look at mm -hmm. the out job output after the job has finished. Look at the Serum history and the SF. That's about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. nothing too fancy. And after it's finished, we did. Yeah, so I guess we've basically done here. So that's the main ideas. Let's see if there's any questions. Nope. So should we go to the last section then?